Vue 3's Composition API introduces a new concept of using Ref and Reactive. This has got some people confused. Are you one of them? Let's take a look. So in this coding short, I wanted to dig into how Vue handles reactive and refs, especially in the Composition API. I was talking with John Papa and Dan Waleen recently, and they seemed to be a little confused by it as well. So I thought maybe this was a common issue with the way the Composition API works, and by extension, how proxies in JavaScript work. And so I wanted to kind of dig into it. And I apologize to John and Dan if I'm mischaracterizing their opinion about this. But I want to sort of dig into it. So I have a pretty simple app, and I have a Composition API version of this very simple page that as I click will add new items to an array and also has a simple property that I can change to a new name, right? And they're completely separate. I'm not doing anything special with shared views or any of that. Let's look at what the code looks like for just a minute and then we'll dig into what I'm talking about with Reactive and Ref. If we can see my app view is really just simple router links and router view. I'm using router just so I can see both pieces. And then I have a view for both the options API and the composition API. Again, super simple, I'm happy to share this. And the options API is pretty much what you might be used to from view two or if using options with view three. So I've got a data element that returns a name and then an empty array, and then a couple of methods that I'm gonna call on click handlers. And the template here is identical in both versions, except for the word options or composition. But the way this works in the options API is a little different in that it's gonna take these properties that I'm returning in data and provide them on the this pointer inside our methods. This is the tried and true way that it has worked for a long time inside of Vue, in Vue 2 with the options API and still in Vue 3. And so in the composition API, it's a little different in that this setup method or the setup function, if you want to think about it in that way, is creating this whole scope so that everything we're defining here can see each other. Instead of having to have some mechanism behind the scenes, take these properties that we want to return as part of our view, make sure that the methods know about it, right? And so these are just closures inside of these. Therefore, we can call code like pushing items into it and setting the value. And so there's some confusion about where to use which. So ref is for simple properties. I like to think about it in the way of ref is for primitive properties. So when you're talking about numbers, when you're talking about strings, uh, very primitive ideas, even dates in some respect can be ref because all you have access to is something that would be normally a value. And to change that value, you would be used to just reassigning that value to name. And we're using const here on purpose because we don't want to change this reference to the items we have. We want to change their contents. And that's where ref and reactive come in. So ref is going to force us to call dot value when we change the value. And why is this? It's to give it's to give you an opportunity to know about that value change. If we re reassign this, the view is not going to know that that object has changed. And so we need this mechanism of calling the dot value in order to change the value. That is a functional change. But before we show you how it works in options, let's talk a little bit about reactive. But reactive is similar in this vein, though it will handle complex objects. So you can think of JavaScript objects, uh, JavaScript classes, and in our case, we're using an array. Because what we wanna do is be notified about changes not only to the data that's associated with it, but anytime anyone calls a method on it. And this is under the covers using something called a proxy. And let's talk about the proxy for just a minute. So ordinarily, we have some JavaScript object. It could be an array, could be an object, could be an instance of a class, whatever it may be. And you want to call a property or a function on that object. And you can do that directly, and it's going to change its consistent state. But when we're using a proxy, we're wrapping that object in something called a target. So this is a 
primitive inside of JavaScript. You can say new proxy and then pass it in the target, as well as passing it in interceptors. These interceptors or handlers are code that are going to be called before and after you're going to change the object. So in the case of something like setting a value on that target, your code is going to look like a get or a set or a, or a function and be able to know about when that change is happening and be able to set it on the target manually. The whole idea here is to allow you to have some code in between you and the object. And, and Vue is really using that. So when we call something like push on an array, Vue inside the handler for push is going to go, oh, this has changed. Therefore, I need to notify and update the UI next time the UI is updated. And that's all a proxy is. There's no other magic here. And so when we call reactive, we're really doing that. And so what it's telling us is that when we add an item, view push or splice or any of the other methods for arrays to add or remove items, view knows about it so that here in the template, it can change the items. That's all it's about. And at first, when you come to the Composition API from the Options API, this feels like a whole new thing. Why do we need to even think about these? So let's look at what this looks like in the browser so we can get a sense of it. I'm going to start over here in the Composition API. I'm just going to refresh that page real quick. And let's look at the debugger. And over in Sources, I'm going to go and look at this actual code. And so let's look at the Composition API. And I'm just going to set a breakpoint here on setting the value and on pushing the new item. So here, when I click on change the name, we're gonna get this name change function executed, right? And we stop in there and what is name? Name is something called a ref implementation. Effectively, it is a property called value and then a handler when that value changes in order to let somebody know. And that's all that that piece is. If we go through and do the same thing for add, because remember, this is a reactive. This items is going to look a little weird in the debugger because there's a handler and a target. Now, this target is what? An array with nothing in it, because that's what we put inside the reactive. We can see that right here in reactive. And the handler is a number of methods that is going to handle. So when someone tries to get the properties of it, it's going to get it from the target. When it wants to set the array, it's going to set those, etc. There's going to be a number of other of these inside the prototype that are going to look like it. And one of those underneath the covers here is going to be push. So when I call push here, it'll know about this new item being shown here. So this might not be behavior you're used to inside of the view object because you've been working with the options API, but in fact you have. Because if we do the same thing for our options view, and let's come back down to this push here in the options and do the same thing, what is the this object? The this object is a proxy that happens to have a target of all the different parts of Vue. Now you notice this has a lot of other things that Vue has chucked in there, the data object attributes, other things you may have used, but it still has the items and name. Those are ordinarily those pieces that we put in the data object. And that's crucial here. You've been dealing with proxies the whole time. You just didn't realize it, it was hidden under the covers. But it also means that the object that you're debugging here is much, much simpler because you're dealing with pure JavaScript objects that happen to be proxied instead of this magical object that it's added all this data to so that we can get at it. And so, so what I'm talking about here is proxies aren't special, right? We're using proxies all over our old options API. We just didn't have to think about it. Here we're being very explicit. What if this is an object that never changes? I'm just, let's say it's a list of states that I need to bind to. I actually don't need reactive here. I don't need the extra weight of a reactive object here because this only matters when I want to change either of these. I can still bind to a name or a list of items without the ref and reactive. They're both specifically about notification to the UI when change happens. That's all it is. That's all it is. One of the more confusing things that can happen is you can think about reactive as being 
nested deep. And what if you have a, a proxy instead of a proxy instead of a proxy instead of a proxy? And that's one of the reasons why we're not dealing with simple proxies. We're using this reactive wrapper. So if we come over here and let's say we go ahead and create another uh, temp items equals reactive of our items, right? This ends up wanting to wrap this items that's already a reactive object in a reactive shell. And we say temp items. Now this isn't realistic because you could just use it, but I want to debug it here so you can see what happens. If we come back here and let's go back to the composition. Now we can see we not only have a reactive on the items, but on the temp items as well. And let's go ahead and set a breakpoint there. Click it. And what we'll see here in temp items is the target continues to be that array, right? Vue knows that if you try to take a reactive and wrap it in another reactive, that it doesn't need two levels. It just needs the one level. And that's important because when we return this items as a reactive here, one of the things that Vue is doing for us or the composition API is it's taking this whole object and turning it into a reactive, effectively flattening out the other reactives. So why would this matter? If I'm already creating a reactive here, why do I need it here? Only because I have code here that's modifying it. That's the only reason. If I didn't have code that was modifying these, I wouldn't need to set them as reactive. It's only where my business logic is going to affect the state so the UI can be updated. That's all it is. There's also helpers in here for testing to see if something is a reactive and even to unref uh, it and unreactive it if you really need to. But those are pretty edge cases. I've been doing composition API for a couple of years. I've never needed them. Doesn't mean you won't, but they are there for when you need them. Hope this helps explain a little bit about what's happening and why it's so obvious than it used to be, that we're still using some of those same mechanisms we're just being more clear about what we're actually dealing with. And in this way, our code should be able to be read easier and you know what's happening. Less magic to me means easier to maintain code. Thanks for joining me for another coding short. If you've gotten something out of this, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you disagree or you're confused about anything, go down there in the comments, put comments in. I'll respond as quickly as I can and I will make this tiny, tiny, not that useful demo available. I'll put a link in the notes as well. Thanks again.